Welcome back students to Unit 8 Chemistry, Thermochemistry and Gases. Today we will be talking about Unit 8.7, the ideal gas law. So in the previous unit, when we said a gas was ideal, if the pressure, volume, or temperature changed, we said it always equaled some constant. When I was introducing your gas laws, I'd say, oh, the pressure times the volume will always equal some constant, or the volume divided by the temperature always equals some constant. Well, there's one more thing that often occurs. If I have a gas and I pump more gas into that balloon, the balloon expands because the pressure inside grows. There's more gas pushing out. So pressure and the amount of gas is proportional, the number of gas particles. So if I if I replace my proportionality with equals some constant, and I could divide by n on both sides and get Avogadro's hypothesis, that when you deal with a gas, the pressure divided by how much gas you have always yields some constant. Meaning, no matter what gas you have, if you have the same amount of gas, they all exert the same pressure as long as they're at the same temperature. This was Avogadro's hypothesis, and this is why we renamed 602 sectillion Avogadro's number, off of the idea that the same number of particles <coughs> would yield the same results. So we now have one more thing we can tack in to our combined gas law. Volume and pressure divided by temperature and number of particles always equals some constant. This leads to what's known as the ideal gas law. The ideal gas constant, this value, this R, if I have a gas, if I have one atmosphere of a gas and I take the volume that it occupies times one mole divided by the temperature, I will end up with a constant. Now, for one mole of any gas at one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius, that value for R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres for every Kelvin mole. R has some crazy units simply because of how it's derived. We actually can use this formula in order to figure out whichever one we're missing. How much gas pressure a gas exerts, what space it occupies, how hot it is, or how many moles there are. We can solve for any of those using the ideal gas law, pervnert. PV equals NRT. Now one thing of note here is we talked about 0.0821 being the value of R, but that value can change. If my unit of pressure is millimeters of mercury, or tor, because those are effectively the same number, then R comes out to be 62.4. Or if my unit of pressure is in kilopascals, my units of R change, and so the value of R changes to 8.31. So we use a different R depending upon the unit of pressure. If our units of pressure are kilopascals, we'll need to use 8.31. If our units of R, if our units of P are in atmospheres, we'll need to use 0.08206. For any problem that you encounter on my test or on my free response, I will provide you the R value you need. I'll provide you either all three or I'll provide you the one you specifically need for that problem. The same will happen on the SOL. On the SOL, they'll say R equals. Please note, this is a trap. These units are units so that this formula works. It does not give you the formula. All right, so please do not try to plug things in here. You will mess up. The formula is pervnert, PV equals NRT. So for this first question, exercise 10, our last one of this unit, how many moles of gas does it take to occupy 120 liters at a pressure of two atmospheres and a temperature of 340 Kelvin? Again, the formula is PV equals NRT. If I want N by itself, I can divide by RT on both sides. So I get the 
pressure times the volume divided by R times the temperature will tell me the number of moles of gas. So I've got a pressure, a volume, and a temperature. So I can go ahead and plug those in. 2.3, 120 liters, 340 Kelvin. Now for R. Our units of pressure are in atmospheres, so we need the R that corresponds to atmospheres. So we're going to use 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres for every Kelvin mole. Again, those units are just so that this works out. When we multiply by our temperature, Kelvins will go away. When we divide by this number, this fraction will flip, so liter atmospheres will cancel out. That's how we end up with the answer in moles, which in this case comes out to be 9.89 moles. Now that problem was kind of straightforward. Our next one throws a couple curveballs at us, so let's do that. If I have 50 milliliters of a container and it holds half a mole, so I've got my number of moles of gas, at a temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius, I've got a temperature, what is the pressure in the container? Well, first thing you might have noticed is temperature cannot be in degrees C. Remember, we will not talk about the temperature of a gas in degrees Celsius. So when you see degrees C, we add 273 to get 258 Kelvin is the temperature we're gonna start with. So again, our formula is pervnert. If I want V, if I want P by itself, I can divide by V on both sides. So the pressure is going to be the number of moles of gas times the ideal gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume. So I can plug in 0 0.45 and 258 and my volume of 50 milliliters. Now I left N blank for a reason. They want to know about pressure. Unfortunately, there are lots of different pressures to choose from. We could have pressure in atmospheres, we could have it in kilopascals, we could have it in tor. It just is going to depend on which R we use. So let's get weird. Let's do 8.31. That will give us kilopascals for every liter mole Kelvin. So when we multiply by moles, moles go away. When we multiply by Kelvin, Kelvin go away. And by dividing by milliliters, wait a minute, milliliters and liters do not cancel out. Our volume has to be in liters for this to work. So, so 50 milliliters, we need to convert 50 milliliters into liters. For every one liter, there are a thousand milliliters. So milliliters cancel out and we end up with 0 0.05 liters. Now liters cancel out. My answer here is gonna be in kilopascals. So I end up with 19,300 kilopascals would be my pressure. That actually is just one of a couple different answers. For R, I could have used 0 0.08206, in which case my pressure could have been in atmospheres, in which case I'd end up with an atmospheric pressure of 191, which is also a valid answer. Or I could have done tor and used 62.4 tor liters for every mole Kelvin, in which case my pressure in tor, 145,000. Tor, or millimeters of mercury, because that's the same value for R. Millimeters of mercury and Tor are the same. All four of these answers are identical. They're all the same thing, just expressed with different units. So your units of R dictate which pressure you end up with, or your pressure ultimately determines 
which are you use. This brings us to the end of unit eight. So what you're going to do is you're going to do page 23 and 24. This brings us to the end of the unit. Remember that gases are ideal if they follow all of those postulates. So everything we've talked about is for an ideal gas. Remember, very few gases are actually ideal. Gases are only ideal at high temperatures and low pressures. So if we were to do an experiment and our volume was our volume in the experiment was bigger than the volume we calculated based on the ideal gas law, there's a couple reasons that could happen. That could happen because we assume that for gases that are idea, the volume of the molecule is negligible to compare to the volume the gas occupies. But when dealing with very, very large molecules like butane or octane, those molecules are very large, so their volume in reality exceeds a negligible value. On the flip side, if we calculate a volume of a gas, and that volume when we look at it in experiments is larger than the experimental value, that means our gas must be attracted to itself, so it must have some intermolecular forces that we are negating. Again, these will only happen if you're not dealing with a gas at a high temperature and low pressure, because gases will behave ideally at high temperatures and low pressures in the extreme. Unit eight is particularly challenging because you have to know all of these formulas. So please study, know your formulas. Again, I will give you the value of R for pervinert. So if you ever come across a problem where it says moles of gas, you're gonna use pervinert. If you come across a problem that talks about a before and an after, you're going to use the combined gas law. And if you're talking about a problem with lots and lots of pressures in it, it is most likely a Dalton's law. Before we take the test, we do have a quiz. Your next quiz is only on gas laws, determining the partial pressure in a mixture, determine the number of moles of gas present based on that pressure, and then convert it to grams. If we change the temperature, how does volume change? If the temperature changes, how does pressure change? You won't have to calculate that last one. You'll simply need to be able to explain it. And that's the end of unit eight. So in class, we practiced our ideal gas law by doing page 23 and 24. Complete page 23 and 24, and we will be done with unit eight.